Hello and welcome. My name is Dave Nager. I'm an associate professor of clinical radiology at the University of California, San Francisco. And this is the first module on advanced imaging, meaning CTs or MRIs of the chest. I thought we would start our first module talking about the types of chest CTs and how one would figure out which one is appropriate. Now, the most common imaging of the chest is the chest radiograph. This is great to figure out if there's anything abnormal, which can be visualized by this modality. But when the chest radiograph gets abnormal, it starts becoming really difficult to figure out what's going on. Here's different opacities, and there's many diseases that could cause these different opacities. In difficult cases, or cases where only CT can show the abnormality, that's when we consider a chest CT. So that's actually our first question. When is a chest radiograph enough, or when do we need a chest CT? If we decide we need a CT, then we have to figure out which kind. So if this sounds like a daunting task, either because you will be ordering different types of chest imaging at some point, or because you're just curious, how is it that people decide which type of imaging to get? The good news is there's lots of resources out there. One of the best is actually a set of what's called appropriateness criteria. So criteria that tells you which test is the best for a given situation. The American College of Radiology has one of the most extensive sets of appropriateness criteria, and it can be found on this website. So these criteria are based on evidence, as much evidence as possible and out there they find to come up with the guidelines. Multiple different specialties provide input. It is not just radiologists. In the current version, when I made this presentation, the ACR appropriateness criteria has over 200 topics. And each topic actually has variants, different versions of the clinical scenario. So there are literally hundreds of different situations. So most commonly encountered situations are covered under these recommendations. For example, they have some examples about what you should do with solitary pulmonary nodules, including very specific ones, like if it's a small nodule. So just a quick orientation, if you go to a specific scenario and look up some appropriateness criteria, it will have different options. So for this one on a pulmonary nodule, one of the options is no imaging. And the next one that I included here was a chest CT. Now you see the column after provides a rating. Then there are comments. There are actually no comments in this case. And then a relative radiation level. And then there's a key that says how much each one of these symbols equals. So the ratings are broken down on a scale of one to nine. High numbers mean a test is appropriate. Middle numbers means it might be. And lower numbers mean it's probably not a good test for that scenario. So when is chest x-ray enough? We check the appropriateness criteria. It's OK if there's a respiratory problem that's pretty mild and we're just trying to do the first assessment. If the answer given by the radiograph is enough to treat and see if they do better, that's usually enough. Usually we stick with just an x-ray if we're looking for rib fractures, maybe tuberculosis if it's a yes, no, they have it question. And often if we're figuring out if a line has been placed properly, for example, in the ICU. So here, this looks like a pneumonia. This is actually covered in the pneumonia or infection module. If the patient doesn't have very severe symptoms, we might be able to treat based on this, and that might be enough. But for example, in this patient, the whiteness we're seeing in the lung is more round. That looks like a mass, possibly a cancer. This probably needs a CT, so we can figure out if it is a cancer and what's going on. So when is a chest x-ray not enough? Dangerous situations. So very sick patients where infections can get serious or patients after a trauma. 
or something's wrong with the aorta, the big uh, vessel in the chest. Cancer usually needs a CT. It's the best way to see different places where the cancer can spread. Chronic problems, where we think we had an answer, we tried treating it and it didn't cure the symptoms, often a CT is the next step. Certain types of lung disease, for example, if patients are exposed to substances as part of their job, or if the radiograph says or suggests there's something really serious going on, CT is usually the next step. So if we need a CT, we now should talk about the different types of CT. The most common chest CT is one where we don't inject contrast, a certain material, into the veins. In these cases, the soft tissues, the parts that are the muscle, the heart, etc., they all look a similar level medium gray, like on this one picture. The reason we get it usually is to look at the lungs. And in the lungs, injecting contrast in the vein does not help as much. So here, for example, are some nodules in the lung. So non-contrast chest CT is good for nodules. Looking for infections, if it's a serious case and we need something more than a chest x-ray looking to see if the airways are abnormal. And actually, non-contrast chest CTs are pretty good to look if there's a bone problem. Sometimes there's some other very specific cases where non-contrast is appropriate, like maybe looking at the just overall aorta size, although usually we use contrast for the aorta. So when we do give contrast, like here, it goes to different parts of soft tissues to different amounts. So here the structures in the mediastinum, that's the middle of the picture here, have different degrees of whiteness. It makes things stand out from each other. So contrast enhanced CTs are good to look for the mediastinum, the structures in the middle between the lungs. It's good to look for lymph nodes to see if they might have cancer or something different inside them than just normal tissue. It's good for the edges of the lung. Adding contrast is good if we're looking in the muscles or other structures in the outside of the chest. It's also appropriate if someone's had a trauma. And as I mentioned, cancer, it's best to use CT to look for the spread, and contrast helps us find places where cancer might have gone. Now, a specific type of contrast-enhanced chest CT is where we specifically make sure there's as much contrast as possible in the vessels. It's called an angiogram, and we can actually target different vessels to be particularly bright. Here, we tried to make the pulmonary arteries bright to see if there's clots in the pulmonary arteries. Or here, we tried to make the aorta bright to see if there's something wrong with the aorta. Now, sometimes you can try to get a scan that shows multiple different parts very bright. Here we see the pulmonary arteries and the aorta. Sometimes this is intentional. Sometimes it's just a lucky part of how the scan was done. Now, another type of chest CT, usually non-contrast, but doesn't have to be, is where we do the scan with as little radiation as possible. You can see on the left is a standard chest CT, we see the lungs, and here's where we use very little radiation. The picture doesn't look quite as good, but we can still see the different structures. This is good when we're looking for lung cancer screening tests. If we're looking just for a nodule in the lung to see if it's changed, or if a patient really is sensitive to radiation, for example, kids, we want to use as little radiation as possible. And I will point out that the technology is getting really good these days. Here's a picture of the lungs. It doesn't look perfect, but you can still see the different structures. And this whole chest CT actually has as much radiation as almost just two chest x-rays. So very low dose chest CT. Now most chest CTs have more than that, but just shows you the limits of what we can do these days. Now, 
One of the last types of chess CTs I'm going to mention is the high resolution chess CT. Now, this has a very difficult name, meaning it doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's the long sorted tale I was talking about. So, when this kind of scam was first introduced, the only way to get a very thin slice that doesn't average lots of the part of the body together was if we only did a few bits of the lung and we skipped parts in between. These days, our scanners are great. So actually, most high-resolution chest CTs and standard chest CTs have the same thin slices. And in fact, in the slice, the resolution is actually the same. So the biggest difference these days, despite the name, is this weird term called the kernel or the filter or the algorithm. It's basically the picture when we look at it, instead of being just a little bit blurry, but a pleasant looking picture, it's a little sharper. So this is better for some things and less better for other things. So you'll see this white consolidation, this part in the middle of the lung, looks about the same. The mediastinum, particularly here, where the mediastinum is very bright, looks the same. Here where this nodule looks the same. But what's different is we can see these little lines a little bit better. So certain things are better if we look under it under this certain algorithm. So the reason one would get a high resolution chest CT is mainly for these set of diseases called interstitial lung diseases. And it's a type of disease and has certain types of findings. It's also one of the only scans where we have the patient breathe out and take extra pictures. That helps us find if parts of the lung are keeping air instead of breathing it out freely. This happens in a number of situations. Without getting into too much detail, an example situation is after someone gets new lungs and a lung transplant, it could actually have bits that trap air. And this was the test that would show that. All right, so that was a quick overview of the types of CTs. And I even gave you some idea of when you might want a different type. But the appropriateness criteria really are best here if you're just starting to learn which tests are appropriate for which situation. All right, so that is it for our orientation to the types of chest CTs and which ones are appropriate in which case. This was one of the modules, part of the Society of Thoracic Radiology curriculum for students and allied health professionals. Please check out our website and please check out the other modules. If you have any questions or comments, here is my name and my email. Please email with anything. Thanks so much.